My name is Flora Blammer, and today's scripture reading for Lent is Matthew 26, verses 36 through 46. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Thank you all for joining us and for the Bible reading this morning. And we are trying something new today. And we are trying a conversation. Um, and the conversation will take place between Marcy and Pastor Kathy and myself about this specific Bible reading. And we want you to think about what are your thoughts? How do you feel when you read this Bible reading? So good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and we look at this Bible reading, and I think the first thing that we see is Jesus with his disciples. And they Jesus has taken them up to Gethsemane, and he has asked them to sit while he goes off and pray. How did that make you feel? It for me, this is the start of a very lonely journey that Jesus is taking because where he taught and healed and all that stuff with everyone else, this part of the journey now is just his. And, it, and he, he's asking the disciples to be with him to, to be supportive and, and they, can't, they, can't, they can't do it. They fall asleep. And I think Jesus coming back and seeing that he has asked them to wait for him. I don't think that was his expectation that, that they would decide at this point, it's, you know, time for naps. <laughs> and I think he was a little bit discouraged. Yeah. And really, you know, what strikes me most about this, um, and it's something for us to consider too on our Lenten journey is how Jesus always went off to pray. So before any decision making, before anything big in his ministry, there are many scripture verses to support that Jesus went off alone to pray and to contemplate and to seek that solace and that relationship with God. And Jesus has asked throughout the scriptures for his disciples to do the same. You know, as an example, Jesus wanted his disciples to pray and to seek God first. Um, and in this case, Jesus is asking that of his disciples, you know, stay awake, pray. You may not be with me, but pray, you know, think about this. Think about what's happening. And they don't do it. They don't do it. Mm -hmm. and, and you yeah. think about, does that happen in, in our lives? You know, do we ask something and someone doesn't do it? Or, or they fall asleep on us. 
We do. And you know, in psychology, don't we call that like denial? Like if you're asking somebody to do something that they don't want to do or participate in a life activity like a funeral or a death and they, they don't step up because they're in denial that that happened. And I think we might see that in the disciples. That Jesus has prepared them for this moment. He's told them it was coming. You know, he's given them plenty of warning that he is not going to be there forever. And the sleeping is, I think, a part of their inability to accept what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Or from a disciple thinking, if this, you know, follows along with, I've just done the Last Supper with Jesus, a big meal. Oh. Um, a lot, a lot of, you know, prayer and trying to figure out what he was trying to tell me at that time. And then he takes me out into the fresh air, um, you know, asks us to wait for him. And it's, I'm tired. I, I don't, you know, I'm, I am tired because I've eaten a big meal. I'm emotionally tired and I fall asleep. And I think, you know, I think disciples, you know, they, they didn't know what else to do. And sometimes I, you know, I feel that way. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. I think modern disciples would get out their phone. And Nowadays. Texting, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can yeah. play about texting disciples and what they text each other. Or else they're Googling, you know, what do I do now? Do I do you know? Now, right. I think having a nervous breakdown, what do we do now? Yes. Yeah. So. And, yeah. and that, that might have been, so they followed him and he was a teacher and he, he, he taught and he preached and he healed. So there was a, an element of mystery about him, right? But the whole time in your head, you've got to be thinking, is, is this for real? right? I mean, is it, is it really real or has this been set up? Because I'm a skeptic, right? And if something happens, I am the last person to go to a metaphysical or a magical or a ghostly explanation. I'm going like, oh, if you heard a noise in the house and the walls are creaking, it's because the house is expanding and contracting. And if there's knocking in the walls, it's because of the pipes, you know? And where I have friends that are just like, no, there's a ghost in there. And I'm like, no, it's not a ghost. It's in your pipes. <laughs> you know, so, so I do wonder what they thought about what they privately thought about him. I mean, yeah, he was great and wonderful, but you know, people who are charismatic, great, and wonderful can also be kind of scary. And I think too, there were so many questions of the disciples. You know, I think Llewellyn brought it up, and we see that in scripture too, where the disciples kind of seemed, I don't want to say dumb, but kind of dumb, like they didn't understand that this was real or really happening, even though Jesus had said it. But also, you know, the Old Testament scriptures, everyone thought Jesus was going to be this, this radical um, leading the army, you know, to, to conquer the Romans and, and have their land back, and that Jesus would be that kind of Messiah not the Messiah that would die on the cross. So even though, you know, Jesus was telling them or in in the mysterious language of Jesus that they often didn't understand, they probably were in some form of denial. (laughs) And yet Jesus is saying, you know, stay awake, be with me. As he faces this darkest hour, a time of need, a time of doubt, And yes, how often do we go through the same, that we need a friend, we need somebody there, but yet like Llewellyn is saying, you know, we get tired, we, you know, we're full from a big dinner and whatnot, um, but yet it's a call to discipleship. Mm -hmm. So when we need our friends and we need someone with us, it's almost like God reaching out to someone in discipleship to be there. So that must have been a huge disappointment for Jesus um, to not have to have his friends fall asleep and not be there for him when he needed them the most, mm-hmm. the most. As like, a, you know, on like a any le- level. like any leader, you're trying to get your people, you know, ready to take over for me. Yeah, yeah, and and 
feeling like, okay, I finally got to the point, you know, all the things that we've been through together, I finally got to the point where I have these 12 people who are going to be able to take over for me. And then they fall asleep on me. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like the two step forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. Like they come along, they come along, they come along, and all of a sudden you get them right on the precipice of, of becoming the teacher themselves. And they're like, kindergarten. <laughs> I'm taking a nap. I'm taking a nap. <laughs> yeah. And I find it in, oh, go ahead, Llewellyn. No, go ahead, Mary. Oh, I, I was just thinking too, you know, I'm always thinking about journeys. Um, I find it interesting that we do start the journey with this particular scripture um, because it kind of is like a foreshadowing. Like if this was a movie, it'd be a foreshadowing of what the disciples do all through the journey to Jesus's death on the cross. They disappear, you know, Jesus gets betrayed, he gets handed over. Um, so it, it's almost that foreshadowing in a movie, you yeah. know, of how they will react through the rest of the journey. Mm -hmm. and, and I see, you know, the human side of Jesus in this passage, too, where, you know, he's going to his father and, and saying, you know, really, do, do you really have to do this? Like, do, do I really have to die in order, you know, in order for your kingdom to continue? And it's scary. Um, and you're thinking, he, you know, I see him thinking that, um, you know, of course, I hear is my movie mind going, you know, thinking that. I have these people behind me that, you know, that are going to be there and, and my father really wants me to do this. And, and he goes back a number of times and says, really, you know, do I have to take this cup? Do I have to do this now? Um, so I see inside of Jesus, this, you know, the scared, he's scared yeah. that this is going to happen. And I, I'm not quite sure what gives him, you know, the ability to go forward. I think he, he, he really surrenders to God. And, 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 and that way he surrenders into the authorities around him. And, you know, he, um, I don't know how fully he, he understands what's going to happen either. I mean, he tells the disciple, the son of man, you know, until he rises again. But I don't, I mean, that kind of language could be a rise in power. It could be, a, you know, it isn't necessarily a, a risen from the dead kind of thing. And so you don't know. So even though the disciples don't really understand stuff, you have to wonder, does Jesus really understand what's going to happen? Or what the, until he gets to the garden and then it's like, wow, this is really going to happen now. Um, it's kind of like going for a surgery and you, you know, you, put it out of your mind, put it out of your mind, put it out of your mind, and all of a sudden you're in the car and then you get to the waiting room and then they they put you in that little room and there's a thing on your face, they go count backwards from 100, you know, and you're like, oh my God, am I really here? Um, and yeah, you really are here now. What do you do? And so what he did was just like we do when we have the, the mask on, is we surrender. Mm-hmm. So how, how do we as present day Christians, like how, how do we stay awake and, and how are we alert to what God wants us to do? So how do we find that? That's an excellent question. How do we stay awake and how do we know what God wants us to do? Well, there's the prayer thing. <laughs> Yes. The prayer thing. Prayer, there's a prayer thing. <laughs> and Mar Marcy, maybe you can address this with your spiritual direction hat on. Well, that those were the thoughts that I had was when Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If we take his example in the scripture and throughout the scriptures of him going off alone to pray, to surrender, as Pastor Kathy said, and to contemplate we find a peace and we find a rest and we find solutions as Jesus did to have that peace to move forward. So I think that it's so important for that rest, contemplation, solitude, um, to be able to help us move forward, but also to keep our relationship with God 
because when everyone else had left, mm -hmm. Jesus still had God and yeah. we too mm -hmm. still have God, mm -hmm. even though we can be betrayed, left behind, God never leaves us behind. Right, Emmanuel, God is with us. So I think it would help our bodies to be stronger and in more in line with the spirit if we did find that rest and contemplation as a spiritual director's perspective. Wow, that, that just, shoo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's hard to do today because we are, our schedules are packed, right? And when you're done and you get home at eight o'clock, you're like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to do anything, right? But there's still laundry and dishes and dinner. So, you know, it, it's hard to find that. So we actually have to make the time to do that, to pray. And we have to be, we you know, like the, the flood, you know, you, maybe you do really want to go take a nap, but you're like, okay, if I just pray for 10 minutes, then I'll go take my nap. As opposed to, I'll take my nap and then I'll get up and pray, because if that rarely happens. So. And, and, and I think you made a good point there that, you know, being in prayer is, is individually based. And, and how long do you have to, Put into it or do it you know it can it can just be I, this in the morning when i get up i have my cup of coffee and i get a daily devotional and i read that devotional in the morning sometimes they talk you know they speak to me so i think about them more sometimes i'm like oh that was nice delete <laughs> but you know it, it it gives me that time to focus um and I'm sure other people have, you know, other practices that they do, that they have specific times that they've set aside. Um, I know Pastor Pat, he used to talk about his specific time in the morning that, you know, he would, he would sit down with either a devotional or his Bible or a book he was reading and, and he would do that. And I was always in awe of that, like, whoa, you know, that would be great. Let's have that time to do that type of thing. But I think everyone has their time. Yeah. And for me, you know, I take little bits throughout the day. So, yes, I'm busy. Yes, I work long hours. And I know Pastor Kathy does too, you know. And so I just try throughout the day. Like, I'll take 10 to 15 minutes in prayer time, um, any time of the day. So if, I'm, if my body is starting to feel heavy, um, tired, or stressed, I have a prayer chair. So I sit in the prayer chair for 15 minutes mm -hmm. and pray. And, you know, all of that lifts, all that body stuff lifts away. Um, so I find that helpful. Or I go outside and take a 10-minute walk, you know, and I just listen to the birds. And I've, I've said this before. But there, it's, sometimes it's just taking those little moments to feed the spirit that help the body yeah. and put you back in line. Yeah. Good point. So um, I think the, the last thing that I got out of this or, or a note that I had written down to myself after hearing this Bible reading was about foresight and, you know, how a situation is going to end. And you don't always know that. Right. Probably most of the time you don't know that. Um, but it, it's having the, the patience to look for it and, and that falls into the prayer time too, I'm sure, you know, but if something, you know, the situation is going to happen in your life and you don't know how it's going to end, but sometimes it's scary, you know, Pastor Kathy talked about going in for an operation and you don't, you know, you don't think about it till you're right there. Um, sometimes you can see it unfolding in front of you. Um, but I think foresight is something that, you know, Jesus showed us in this, pa in this passage here. Well, ladies, this has been a really terrific discussion. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? I think I'm good. All right. So what do uh, we said that for, for everybody at home, um, we had a little line picked out. And that was, um, what, what do you think? Let us know what you think about this passage and how you understand the disciples and Jesus. Um, and let that be part of your spiritual journey. Would you pray with me? Holy God, our Father and our Mother, we thank you so much for our community, for your, for your um, stories in the Bible that help us to relate 
to both God and each other. And we thank you for your everlasting love and for your everlasting presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.